We are here at the launch program for the Ford Raptor R. That means V8, supercharged, 700 horsepower, ridiculous capability. It's everything that you've ever wanted from a Raptor. So we're gonna drive around the dunes. We're gonna talk about some of the technical stuff and how this thing drives. So get ready to get excited. This was a launch program, so sadly we did not get enough time to put the Raptor R up on the lift, but I do have time to tell you a story. The Raptor's first generation came out in 2010. It was always meant to be that Baja capable trophy truck. It was meant to not rock crawl, but run dunes at high speeds. It was powered by either a 5.4 liter V8 or a 6.2 liter V8. Those power plants lacked modern sophistication, but they made up for it in a fire and brimstone sort of attitude. Lots of sound, lots of character. It's exactly what you want in a product like this. You want character, you want sound in your road going Tonka truck. Sadly for the second generation Raptor, they killed the V8. They felt it did not match the target mission of being that road going Baja truck. While the EcoBoost powered second generation Raptor grew in capability, efficiency, speed, and overall sophistication and refinement, it killed a lot of its character, at least in my opinion. And to add insult to injury, Dodge, or Ram, came out with a TRX, essentially the same sort of truck. A big monster truck that was Baja capable, you could jump it, and it was powered by a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 right out of the Hellcat. It made a ton of noise, and it was extraordinarily entertaining. Whether Ford will admit it or not, it put a lot of pressure on them for the third generation Raptor. And when that third generation Raptor came out, it came out with a V6, but they did change the rear suspension architecture. Gone with leaf springs, and in its place was a five-link setup with coil springs, which according to the Ford performance engineers was exactly what they needed to put the power down if they wanted the Raptor to go faster. And with that architecture, and if you have $109,000 burning a hole in your pocket, you can now buy the Raptor R. They put the V8 back in this thing. It is the 5.2 liter, supercharged Predator engine right out of the GT500. And if you speak to any of the Ford performance engineers who worked on that power plant, they will tell you it was everything they always wanted to build. And they knew it was their last chance with the upcoming emissions and all that other fun stuff. This was their last chance to build an engine like this. And it shows. It is a brilliant drivetrain. It is very, very fun to use in the GT500. And in this variant, they have changed the tuning a little bit, changed the accessories, so you get a different oiling system, different air intake, obviously the exhaust changes, and the pulley size changes on the blower. So it makes less overall horsepower, but it does make more torque earlier. From a suspension perspective, the Raptor R is essentially identical to the 37-inch tire package equipped base Raptor. So it gets different spring perches, different suspension tuning, and all of their fun stuff. What they do change, however, is the front springs. You get beefier front springs to deal with the added weight and stronger front axles. This still goes in a rear-wheel drive, unlike the TRX, which means you can do rolling burnouts. It's still very comfortable in the street, and it's still a very, very capable truck, as we're about to find out. So let's go take this for a quick drive through the sand dunes of Michigan.
Mark, we're in the Raptor R. You know what that means? I don't know. Show me. V8! I'm gonna carry some speed. Now remember, this has got the same suspension, more or less, minus front axles and stiffer springs as the standard EcoBoost Raptor with 37s, which means it is very capable. Yeah, that you know, we spent a good day. <laughs> oh geez. Why is this so steep, Jack? I should just get out and roll down and you can drive over my corpse. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> really? You're hearing? Yeah. <laughs> Why you want to buy this thing? <laughs> <laughs> so even if your body's flying around in zero gravity, you get to hear the V8? Yeah, it's perfect. And spend $109,000 on this bad boy. 109? Wait till the dealer's going to hold you to <laughs> 209. So we drove this out here in the morning. We spent about an hour in it. Honestly? On the road, other than this being a hell of a lot faster than the EcoBoost V6, it's very, very similar. If you drive this in normal mode, not sport, it feels like a standard F-150. And with a five-link oh. rear, it rides really, really well. I mean, I mean what this do you think? Thing, like, everybody's like, oh, man, you know, there's really challenging out here. I mean, there's nothing that this thing isn't going to do. I mean, I, I mean, we say that about, like, even the TRX, it just everything felt effortlessly. The regular V6 Raptor, you know, <laughs> it's so damn capable. This is just adding the power that you wanted, that everybody wanted, the V8s back, <laughs> supercharged. I mean, it's nuts, man. Oh! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> That is this compare to say something like the TRX? Is that's really what everyone wants to know about? What do you think? Well, I mean, man, you have to be really going. You have to be doing some serious shit. I mean, they say this stuff, this thing's Baja ready, and I, I, I don't disagree. Like, you can do some seriously stupid shit in here, and it just takes it. We, we barely bottomed it out, and even when we did, it was like a non-issue. We in the got front. air more than once. Yeah, we drag raced it. I mean, what you really, what you care for, you're paying for the V8, and it does not, it does not disappoint. Yeah, this Predator all. V8 is great. The and stability it, control tuning is incredible. The transmission control, tu the tra transmission control is amazing. Even in manual, you know, even taking manual. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> All right, as before we were so rudely interrupted I me mean, flying the camera off the car. Yes, yeah, it's, it's absurdly capable as it, you're kind of expecting as it sort of should be as well. I think the big thing I notice versus the uh, TRX is well, at least on road, the level of fun you can have because this can go into rear wheel drive only makes it in some ways more entertaining. Yeah, right? that's a huge advantage, especially for street driving. If you really want to pitch this thing sideways and do that and have the, like the burnout effect of going rear wheel drive, it becomes like that street truck. You, if you've ever driven a GT 500, you're getting the same, you know, excitement that you get with that truck, or I'm sorry, that that engine in that car, and it feels very similar. This is very very fast. You know, we did some drag race stuff and some drifting. And I mean, it, it's crazy how fast this is. Obviously, you know, you can't compare it to an electric truck, but you get the sound, you get the feel. Um, the, the only thing I will say that's a little bit of a negative is it has some fake engine noise. Yeah, and unlike in the GT500 where it is also present, you don't, you don't notice it in that car at all. I didn't even know it existed until we spoke to Carl, the chief engineer of Ford Performance. Yeah, and but a lot in, of it has to do with this is quieter on the inside. You know, it's very much like, you know, people like the TRX is quiet. This is also very quiet. You don't hear the engine as much. You do hear more supercharger, but they had to fill in fourth order sound that disappeared with how quiet this cabin is with some fake engine noise. And I think it is a detractor. And the other thing that we've learned is even with stability control all the way off, they still have it come in in extreme circumstances. So if you're like bobbling this thing going sideways, it comes back on just to prevent, you know, potential rollover and stuff like that. Or really, really having a bad day. Uh, the last thing I will bring up is I do think these Fox shocks compared to the Bill Steins, particularly over these whoops and bigger bumps, do actually seem to jostle you a tad bit less 
than what's found in the TRX, but I, this also has the benefit of coming out later. This feels more balanced than the TRX. The TRX is really nimble and, oh my God, it, it does <laughs> feel soft in some, some regards. I will say that I feel like this is a far more controlled truck at the limit when you're really pushing it. It changes directions well like this it yeah. just feels very natural and easy to control it doesn't feel as heavy in a lot of ways as the trx does yeah i think that's a good place mark to wrap this up and head into the final thoughts or what do you think sounds good jack Yay! Oh, oh. Raptor R video and you've seen our previous Raptor videos or even things like the TRX, you're going to know that these things are so capable now that most normal people are never going to reach the limits of them. And that's the point of designing and pushing the boundaries of high performance and track capable things and off-road capable products. The thing that kind of surprises me here is the prices keep going up and up and up. Um, if you would ask me not too long ago what I thought about some of the better performance cars and better sports cars going from like 60, 70,000 all the way up to like 120, 150,000, I wouldn't have believed you. And I think, you know, while what they've done by pushing the boundaries of electronics, damping, mechanical design, frame design, engine design, transmission design, it's all pushed so far forward, it, it's just basically for a very small percentage of the public. And if you have the money for something like this and you're you're the biggest truck and you love like this off-road, this Baja style truck, the Raptor R is every single thing that you're gonna want from a product like this. It's a very, very easy decision to make considering the V6 version of this truck left a lot off the table in terms of passion and just feel. This, this puts it all back. So there's almost nothing to complain about. When you put this truck on the road, I'm not kidding you. When we drove to the off-road park, I couldn't believe how well sorted it was. You know, I thought the TRX was like, how this is like you don't you can't even tell that it's an off-road capable truck. This is even better in terms of road compliance. It's so comfortable and smooth, and it's really quiet. I think that's the one thing that caught me off guard here is I thought this would be brash like the GT500, and it is not. It is really, really refined. Even when you you get the dumps open and like Baja mode, it's still mostly quiet and i think that's one of the reasons why they added some fake engine noise to this which i talked to the chief engineer about it and he just seemed to like glaze over when i talked about fake engine noise why it was here clearly they don't care and i don't think the customer does that would be really one of the only really only negative parts about it because this is just mastery of the truck platform for a mainstream person you know we beat a dead horse with the v8 going away and all this and you know, I wish I had excessive amounts of money to start collecting all these. And I'm sure a lot of people on here would think, you know, if I had a hundred plus thousand dollars, what would I buy? And it's becoming a very, very difficult choice to make. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.